Hi everyone, this is Dean Allen Nebley from New Jersey Family Magazine. Thrilled today to be joined by Dr. Winoker, um, who is gonna to talk to us today about why it's so important to keep up with our pediatric dental appointments. Um, Dr. Winoker is a board certified dentist with Dentistry for Children, which has five practices, right? Five offices? Five offices. And uh, a couple Ocean new, County. one in orthodontics now, so, and has been around for 40 years generations of um, patients. So I'd love to start by hearing a little bit about your practice. Sure, so my dad um, actually started the practice 40 years ago in Tom's River. He's um, also a pediatric dentist. He started the practices with my mom, um, who is a general dentist. So he's been uh, working in Ocean County for, for years. And he's really um, gone to love um, the population there. And a lot of the families there have, have known him and seen him for multiple, multiple generations. So I came in a few years ago. And since then, um, we have been working to expand our practices. We're now in Lakewood, Tom's River, Jackson, um, Neptune. And then we have a, a new office in Howell. That's really exciting that you're growing. Um, and I think one of the big reasons we wanted to chat with you today is because as we're dealing with the pandemic and a lot of parents have been delaying things that seem not essential, right? They're only going to the most essential appointments. Right. And I think um, we're, you know, we know how important it is to not delay those routine checkups. And so I thought we could start with just what your thoughts are on that and also what your practice is doing in terms of safety protocols and how you've reinvented the, the patient experience during COVID. Absolutely, this is a very strange and crazy time for everybody. And you know, our practices focus on pediatric dental health, but also the special needs population. And we see special needs patients up to any age and especially um, in children and special needs, oral health and oral care is extremely important. And I know a lot of people are very nervous to go out and go to the dentist during this time, but it's essential. Um, dental cavities are the most prevalent disease in children. So it's very, very important that they stay up on their oral health and their hygiene and all of their regular appointments to make sure that these kids aren't in any pain so we can treat what's necessary uh, before it gets to be a very big problem. Um, we've changed a couple things in our practice uh, since the whole COVID epidemic. We're very lucky because our practices were really up on infection control prior to the pandemic, um, but we are doing quite a few things to keep all of our patients and our staff and my team healthy. As far as my staff and, and my team is concerned, every day we wear, um, N95 masks for any procedure. Before we even um, get started for the day, we have a health screening. Um, everybody gets their temperature taken and we review all of this stuff as a team uh, prior to the appointments for the day. Every patient that comes in gets a, um, a questionnaire about where they've been, if they've experienced any health concerns, if anybody in their family or whoever's living with them um, have had any issues. And then once they come in for the visit, we take their temperature as well. One really big thing that we're doing in our office is we're really trying to reduce the volume of people in, an, in the office at a time. So where it used to be that a patient may come with both of their parents, a grandparent, other kids, Right now, we're asking that um, the patient just come with one caregiver or one other person just to reduce the amount of people in the office. So everybody that comes in, they wear a mask, um, they sanitize their hands, and their temperature is checked upon entering the building. Aside from that, we put in air filtration systems uh, around the practice just to really help reduce the aerosols because everybody's worried about that with dental procedures. Um, and we make sure we thoroughly clean the rooms and let everything settle uh, prior to bringing in the next patient. It's a lot, a lot of work that goes into it for sure. It is, it is. Um, and I'm sure it extends your day. You may, your operating day might be shorter, but your prep and post prep must be a lot longer and more detailed, clearly. It is, it is. But our, the, the safety of my patients and my team is the most important. So if that means reducing the number of people and just taking a little extra time 
or you know wearing some extra um, protective equipment that's what we're going to do yeah that's really reassuring you mentioned about um, dental decay and i know this is something i've read a lot about um, it being like the lead leading you know pediatric uh, disease in the united states which i you know you don't think of it as a disease as a parent right. you think of that as a disease but it turns out it is and it's really common especially by the time your child gets to kindergarten they experience some sort of dental decay. Can you talk about that and what parents need to know about that? Absolutely. A lot of people don't even think about cavities as um, a disease or as an infection. And that's what we're trying to get people to understand. It's, it's very interesting to learn that dental decay is more common than asthma, which is one of the more common childhood ailments. Um, so we really have to get on top of these things because the bacteria from cavities can spread elsewhere in the body. And aside from that, can cause pain, can cause infection, can cause kids to miss school um, and get and have malnutrition um, due to the pain that they're experiencing. So what parents really need to understand is that there we do recommend that their child come to the dentist by age one. The older thinking is that the, a child comes to the dentist by age three. But we're finding is by that time, it's way too late. If we see them by age one or six months after their first tooth, it really reduces um, the caries rate among these children. Aside from that, brushing twice a day, flossing young children, um, and really reducing the amount of juice and sticky snacks that children have is essential. And what about taking care of infant teeth and baby teeth. I always found that really challenging and never felt like I was doing it correctly when my kids were babies. How do you, what do you suggest parents do in terms of it, really care when they're babies and their teeth are just gums and just barely coming in? Right, it's not easy. Um, but what we found is that the earlier you start brushing a child's teeth, the more compliant they are. So when they're really young, they're, they're moving around. They're not easy to control. But if you lay them down and put their head in your lap, it's an easy position to be able to brush their teeth. Um, with young children and babies, you do wanna use a tiny bit of fluoridated toothpaste because the fluoride is very helpful um, when the teeth are erupting into the mouth. So just a tiny little smear is very important. And it, it doesn't have to be that long when they're, when they're young. You just wanna make sure you get all the soft stuff all the, off the teeth and really just to desensitize them to the toothbrushing experience. And speaking of baby teeth, how important are they in terms of um, the role they play in overall oral health? I know at some point all those baby teeth are gonna go away and they're gonna be replaced, but what role do baby teeth play? How important are they? Absolutely, this, this is a question that we get all the time. You know, when a parent comes in and their child has a lot of cavities, the first thing is, well, they're just baby teeth, they're gonna fall out. But baby teeth really are essential. Though the back teeth, they sometimes don't fall out until the child is 11 or 12 years old. So that means that that baby tooth has to hold that particular space until the new tooth can come in. So to maintain that space and to make sure that the tooth structure is there is very important or else the child automatically has a crowding issue that they're gonna have to deal with earlier. Also, if the baby teeth aren't healthy, the new teeth can be affected by any infection or damage done to the baby teeth. Oftentimes we see permanent teeth that come in with like a spot on them or damage due to an infection that had happened in the, in the baby teeth. So keeping them clean, keeping them healthy, and filling any cavities that need to be fixed are extremely important. Aside from that, the front, the front teeth are very important for speech. Um, just for a child's confidence. You know, it's, it's a lot of things that are involved um, in these baby teeth starting at a very young age. And then speaking of taking care of teeth at a young age, can you talk about toothpaste and what kind of toothpaste you should be using when they're babies and as they get older and when fluoride gets introduced and how often they should be brushing and flossing from babyhood to childhood? Right. So. A little tiny bit of fluoride toothpaste should be used when a baby gets their first tooth. And that's just a tiny smear on a little toothbrush. And that does not need to be wiped off. It would be brushed on the teeth and then a child can swallow that. For a child to have an issue with the fluoride from the toothpaste, 
they'd have to swallow quite a lot of toothpaste. As they get older and they transition to having more teeth, then a little more toothpaste can be used, like a grain of rice is what we say on, on the toothbrush. And, and again, brush it on, leave it. They don't have to rinse, they don't have to, to spit it out. But just a tiny little bit of fluoride toothpaste really helps those teeth as they're erupting into the mouth. For parents that are against fluoride for, for whatever reason, um, a different type of toothpaste that people can use um, is something with a sweetener called xylitol. That also seems to help reduce caries rates in kids. So, you know, it can go either way, but as long as a, a parent is brushing and uh, flossing when those teeth contact, and that's usually around two or three, um, that's, that's important. As long as they're getting all the bacteria and all the soft stuff off their teeth, then it would set them up for success in the future. And in terms of success, how would you, what are your, what are your tips, top tips for parents in terms of preventing tooth decay, whether it's habits. Also, I'm curious about foods that mm -hmm. are trigger foods for cavities and foods that we should encourage our kids to eat. Absolutely. So like I said, starting to go to the dentist by age one, um, if that's the case, the parent, when they come to the appointment, they really mm -hmm. learn mm -hmm. all the, the positives and negatives of coming to the dentist, of the food choices that they give their children. Some good food choices are yogurt, cheese, um, whole fruits and vegetables, not the gummy fruit snacks. Um, really staying away from any fruit juice, that's very important. Um, all, mostly water during the day. A lot of people seem to think that drinking milk all day is great or Ensure or some of these um, Pediasures. That's very, very um, high in, in um, sugars and high in carbohydrates and kids get cavities very easy. Um, as the child grows in our practice at around six years old when they're getting permanent teeth, we do put sealants on their permanent molars. And that's a protective coating to help children not get cavities on the biting surface of their permanent teeth. So if the children are starting to, the, to come to the dentist at a young age, then we follow them every six months and give them and their parents recommendations for things that they could do better or change a little bit to improve the oral health of their child. My kids got sealants and I have to say it was the best thing we ever did for them. I mean, after that, I never saw any cavities. It was Really it's a huge deal. It is. Difference, especially because my daughter has a sweet tooth, so it really made a big difference. Yes. <laughs> I would say my last question would be just in general, if there's anything we, we haven't covered for parents, I mean, we're, they're looking to get a, as much learning from you as possible in terms of your top tips to keep their smiles looking great and healthy. Yeah. That, so, that not have covered. Well, you know, I've, I've been getting a lot of questions, especially during, during this time, because the kids are home, they're bored. A lot of children are gonna be schooled at home now as well. So reducing the amount of snacks that a child has during the day is very, very important. Um, right now, because they're home, they seem to be sitting and eating, eating junk all day. And I can understand that, but that increases the chance that a child will get a cavity. But even though a child may be home for school or their patterns may be different, coming to the dentist, making sure they're brushing at least twice a day um, and flossing at night is very, very important. Um, but if a parent is concerned about coming to the dentist or how their dentist is making things safe during this time, they should call them um, and talk to somebody at the front desk about what they're doing um, to keep their child safe so then they can feel reassured that they're coming into a safe environment and that this is for the benefit of their child, not for um, not putting them in harm's way. I, I need to heed your advice about snacking as well. Yeah. <laughs> like sitting all day, myself, my kids, it's, it's hard to do, but we have to do it. Um, Dr. Winokur, we're so uh, grateful. We learned so much from you during our chat. And for anyone who's interested in learning more about the practice it, in Lakewood, Jackson, Tom's River, Howell, and Neptune, go to dentistryforchildrenus.com and the number is 833-KIDS-DFC and we really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.